Dear students, in this lecture, we will study the determination of dielectric constant in the solid. This method is applicable to solids available in the form of a slab. The needle of quadrant electrometer is given a constant potential V using a battery. Let us look at how we will determine the dielectric constant of a solid. The construction follows. The needle of a quadrant electrometer is given a constant potential V using a battery. This is the quadrant electrometer. This is connected to a potential V using a battery. The potential V is given by using these two batteries. C1 is a variable capacitor. This is the C1 which is variable capacitor. C2 is a guard ring capacitor in which the lower earth plate is movable. This is the C2 capacitor which is a guard ring capacitor which has uh, two plates. This is the G represents one plate. Another one is this one. This is connected to micrometer M and this plate is movable one. The distance through which the lower plate of C2 is moved can be measured using a micrometer screw M. Since this is a movable plate, it can be made movable using this screw M and it is measured using this screw. The midpoint of the battery B1 is earthed. So, using a micrometer screw M, this is the midpoint of batteries and it is represented by B1 and it is made earthed using a micrometer M. The midpoint of battery B1 is earthed so that its end points are kept at potential difference plus V and minus V with respect to earth. Since you can see from here, there are two batteries where B1 is the midpoint which is connected to one of the batteries positive and other batteries negative. Therefore, we can have potential difference plus V and minus V with respect to earth at the point B1. Using this arrangement, the capacitors C1 and C2 can be charged equal to equal and opposite potentials by pressing the key K. Here, using this arrangement, we can charge capacitors C1 and C2 to a equal and opposite potentials that means plus V or minus V by pressing the lucky K. On releasing the key, the capacitors charge the quadrant electrometer. When we release this key K, the capacitors will charge the quadrant electrometer. If their capacitances are also made equal by suitably varying C1, their charges will become equal and the electrometer will show zero deflection. By varying capacitor C1 and by releasing the key, we can charge the electrometer's capacitances when their charges will become equal. That means A, B charges in the electrometer will become equal. The electrometer will show zero deflection. At that point, the capacitance of all the capacitors that is C1, C2 and the capacitances of electrometer are all equal. At that point, the electrometer will show zero deflection so that we can say this method is called as null method. Now we will see the working and theory of measurement of dielectric constant of a solid. Now we will look at the working of this arrangement. The capacitance of the variable capacitor C1 is adjusted till there is no deflection in the quadrant electrometer by pressing and releasing the key. See, the capacitance of this C1 variable capacitor is adjusted till there is no deflection. That means it should not show any deflection. That means it should show initially zero deflection. In order to make it zero, we have to vary the capacitance C1. This is the initial adjustment. 
Now the position of the lower plate of C2 is read on the micrometer scale. Now we have to measure the position of this lower plate of C2 by using the micrometer M. The dielectric slab of thickness T and dielectric constant epsilon r is introduced between the plates of C2. Now, in between the plates of capacitor C2, that means this G and this lower end, we are introducing a slab. It is a dielectric material. It is of thickness T and it is having dielectric constant epsilon r. Now we are introducing that in between the plates of a guard ring capacitor C2. Because of the introduction of slab on the lower plate of C2, there will be a movement of lower plate. As a result, the capacitance of C2 increases. Because of the introduction of dielectric material, capacitance increases of the C2 capacitor. The lower plate of C2 is moved till the electrometer shows null deflection. Now we have to again make the electrometer deflection to zero. In order to do that, we have to move this micrometer which is connected to lower plate of C2 in order to get null deflection on the electrometer. Now the capacitance of C2 is moved till the electrometer shows null deflection. Okay. Now the capacitance of C2 is equal to that of C1. How? In the initial adjustment, we have varied capacitance of capacitor C1 in order to get null deflection. We have varied the distance between lower plate and upper plate or guard ring of this capacitor C2 in order to make null deflection. Therefore, we have got capacitance C1 is equal to capacitance C2. The distance x through which the lower plate of C2 has been moved is measured using the micrometer screw. In order to make C2 is equal to C1, we have made this lower plate of C2 to move by a distance of x. Now we will see the theory in order to get the desired dielectric constant of a given dielectric slab. For that we need a small theory. Let A be the effective area of guarding capacitor plates C2 and D is the distance between the plates of a capacitor C2. Small letter D. And the area is capital letter A. Then, by definition of capacitance, we can we have capacitance of C2 without the dielectric material is equal to epsilon naught A divided by D, where epsilon naught is the absolute permittivity of free space, A is the effective area of guarding capacitor C2, and D is the distance between the plates of a capacitor C2. Now the capacitance of C2 with the dielectric is given by epsilon naught A which is not changed by the introduction of dielectric divided by D plus X minus T plus T divided by epsilon R. This is the final distance between the plates of a capacitor C2 after introduction of dielectric. There is a change in the denominator in the case of changing the electric material. But the capacitance in the two cases is the same. C2 is same with the dielectric or without dielectric because we have moved lower plate of capacitance after introduction of the slab in order to make it equal to C1 and in order to get the deflection as zero deflection or null deflection. Therefore, these two should be equal to each other. By equating the same, we get epsilon naught A divided by D is equal to epsilon naught A divided by D plus X minus T plus T by epsilon R. By simplification, we get epsilon naught A, epsilon naught A, epsilon naught A 
gets cancels both sides denominators becomes equal that is d is equal to d plus x minus t plus t by epsilon r epsilon r d and d gets cancels whenever we send x minus 2 to this side left hand side we will get minus of x minus t it is equal to t by epsilon r r for outside this equation we have to multiply it by minus that means x minus t becomes t minus x by rearrangement we will get epsilon r is equal to t divided by t minus x this is the expression for dielectric constant of the dielectric slab which is introduced between the capacitor c2 in this way we can measure the dielectric constant of a solid thank you